Hello everyone, this is Tatiana and welcome to my channel. I am so excited about today's video because today I will be sharing with all of you the steps of creating five different nail shapes. Today, together with all of you, I will not only be filing my nails, but walking through the basic steps of building extensions, and I will be completing all of this with polygel. Our first shape for today is the almond shape. I do love this shape, and it is one of the most requested. When creating an almond shape, we need to narrow the nail form by pressing the form's tip. Also, we are going to have the tip of the form pointed a little bit upward. Further, I am taking the poly gel and spreading it out with my brush. After the poly gel has been properly formed, I am squeezing the form's tip once again before taking it to cure underneath the lamp, as this area can become unglued. Our next shape is an oval, and the oval shape is a classic. When placing the nail form on, we are keeping it level with the nail, or a little bit down. A great way of checking this is by placing an orange stick against your nail form, lining it up with the lines of your nail form, and checking if the lines on the form are all continuing straight. If they are, then the tip of the form is also lying straight. But as you can see on the almond shape, the lines of the form are going a bit upward. We've placed on our form, so now it's time for the poly gel. The oval shape has a more rounded tip, making it a great shape for shorter nails. The nail form's tip is also a bit narrowed out for the oval shape, but not as much as for the almond. Moving on to the square shape. However, since we are using material, um, this will be more of an arched square. First and foremost, I am checking the sides to make sure that they are going on straight and are not narrowed, and the form itself is pointed a bit upward. Once the form is placed, I am ready to apply the poly gel. The square's shape should have straight parallel lines that are evenly going out from the sides of the natural nail. Moving on, we are creating a ballerina shape. The nail form for the ballerina's shape can be placed a little bit upward or straight and needs to be narrowed at the tip. What's different about this shape is how it is raised up and the ballerina shape can have a slight hump on top. Our fifth shape today will be a beautiful stiletto. The nail form for the stiletto shape needs to be completely narrowed and glued at the end. And by looking at it from above, the line should be centered. And viewing our form from the side, it should be straight or tilted a little bit down. Stilettos are never done on short nails, so I'm spreading the material out to the tip of our nail form. After letting everything cure, I can remove all of these nail forms. Further, I am removing any stickiness and proceeding to our filing. Filing always starts from the sides of our extensions, therefore I am taking my nail file and placing it up against the side of my extension and filing in a straight line. 
Then we are simply filing taking away any unevenness. Further, we are bringing together these two lines by filing on top, smoothing out any dips or unevenness. I'm holding the nail file evenly and checking periodically for any dense or uneven areas. Then we can move on to filing down the lower sides of the nail and tip. The bottom side should be going out from the natural nail's point of growth, and from this point, we are lifting the file just a bit and creating a smooth, rounded tip at the end. Now just to round out the tip and it's ready. I decided that this darker background would be easier for all of you to really see the detail in the nail shape. Look at just how beautiful this almond shape is. Now for the oval shape. Just like creating the almond shape, or any shape for that matter, I'm starting off by the sides, then the upper arch, and finally smoothing out by the cuticle, which you may not have to do with extensions as the material is applied very smoothly. The fourth step is filing underneath, and of course the tip of your nail. The main thing that is really changing between each shape is how the nail file is tilted. The oval shape is a more rounded shape, it's not super narrowed, and looks really natural. From the side, you can see the straight line from the apex to the very tip of the nail. Let's continue to the square shape. The nail file should be completely square and even against the nail, not narrowing anything at all. Further, I am filing down the tip and the upper arch. If you look at your square shape nail from the tip, you can really tell where you need to file more and see any unevenness clearly from there. Therefore, as I am filing the upper arch, I'm checking how everything looks from the tip. Now for the bottom of our nail. I'm holding the nail file from the point of growth evenly and not tilting it up or rounding anything. I'm simply filing in a straight line. Now for our stiletto shape. I do love stilettos. I'm holding the nail file evenly starting from the point of growth. After having applied the material, a slight dent formed in the material which is really noticeable from the side. So with the help of my nail file, I'm going to try to lift and even out the top, but if this isn't possible, I may need to add more material. If you do notice that the tip or the apex is thinning out too much, then there really is no choice but to add more material. I have managed to successfully even out the area by filing. So now I can continue to the bottom of my nail. Here we need to bring the lines together from the natural nail's point of growth to the very tip. And for this shape, both sides are being brought together to one point at the end. By following these steps, you will end up with a beautiful stiletto. Last but not least, our ballerina shape. I'm filing down the sidewalls, filing the tip, and like the square shape, I am checking for any unevenness from the tip. However, unlike the square shape, I am lifting the shape up to the tip with the file. And here they are. I have walked around with super long nails before on only one hand, 
but having one hand in five different nail shapes is definitely something new for me. I hope all of you found this video interesting and helpful, and if you did, then please give it a big thumbs up, and until next time.